Hey, it's Joel, welcome back. This is the K1 Max from Creality, and I can't believe I'm actually gonna say this, but this is by far one of the most incredibly positive 3D printing experiences I've had in recent memory. Yes, this is including all variants of Prusa's new stuff. This is including bamboo. This is including stuff I've streamed. I got it out of a box and I recorded the whole thing just in case because I didn't know if another Uncle Jesse incident was gonna happen. Thankfully, it did not. And I got it out of the box and it was all put together and I did all the diddly doos and the bibbly bobs and turned it on and got it printing and out pooped a Benchy really fast. This 3D Benchy in Creality's Hyperspeed PLA printed in like 16 minutes and I was astounded. From the moment I cut the tape on the box to the point that this Benchy was produced, it took zero effort from me, like minimal effort. I was just blown away, so I thought, all right, Creality, let's do this. So I loaded up Orca Slicer, shout out to Feversoft, and I put in one of Zhao 3D's little dragon models. Not so little, obviously, but then I set it to print in the same hyperspeed PLA, and sure enough, it's perfect. It's smooth, it's wiggly, it's hard to photograph because it's just a, a very semi-translucent white. But I have to tell you, like up close, in person, I love it. I love it so much. I love it so much. Just calm down. All right, Creality. What if I threw in some of my High Five Blue, a different PLA, not high speed, and run the exact same G code? It's perfect. It's perfect. Once again, this Zhao 3D model in High Five Blue PLA using the same G code as the Hyperspeed PLA from Creality turned out incredible. And I love it too. You don't hurt my kids. I will fight for you. It's an all enclosed machine. The build plate gets nice and hot. The nozzle too. What if we throw some polylite ABS in the mix? What if I don't throw an easy model at it? What if I throw something that has the chance of being catastrophically terrible? Look at this model. This basket by Clockspring is incredible. Not just as a 3D model, but but also in the print quality of the ABS. It's perfect. You would think ABS would flex or something if the temperature wasn't right within the build chamber. And it didn't because it worked. This was nice and hot. Like I put my hand on it when it was printing ABS and I was like, ooh, that's warm. That feels nice. So there we have it. The Creality K1 Max printing perfect in PLA, not just its own and in ABS. Surely there must be a drawback. And there is. Why? 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 Why do manufacturers continue to ship a 0.4 millimeter nozzle in a machine with a larger build volume? There is no reason this should come default with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Just not, it shouldn't. And so in exploring, changing out the nozzle, I came across something really interesting. This is the Flowtech hot end from Micro Swiss, and it is a direct replacement of what Creality has inside of there. Now the Creality hot end is doing an amazing job printing perfectly, but what the Flowtech hot end offers that it doesn't is a cold nozzle change and the ability to change the nozzle without having to use two hands. To talk about why that's important, let's talk about first how a Creality hot end or a hot end of this style works. There is a heat break that plugs in to a heater and then a nozzle screws in to the heater. Way, way, way back in the day, you would have the heat break and the nozzle meet in the heater and that's where filament would be run through. And you had to torque that nozzle into place. And you had to use all the hands you had available in order to do this. And if for some reason it wasn't torqued perfectly and those flat surfaces weren't mated perfectly, you could come up with leakage from the hot end. Oh, that's not good. 
Printing technology has advanced in recent years, but the hot end that Creality ships with the K1 Max is still a throwback. It's a legacy hot end. While it may look different, it still has a nozzle that goes into a heater and a heat break that meets it at the very top. The problem here, again, even with these newer throwback hot ends, is that the heat break and the nozzle are meeting in a place where filament can get molten. And if you don't torque those two faces together sufficiently, then molten plastic can leak out of your hot end. And that is not a fun time. Where Micro Swiss with the Flowtech has improved things is that you don't have to worry about torquing a nozzle up against a heat break. The nozzle and the heat break are an integrated piece. So as you put the nozzle in place without using both hands, the filament enters in the cold zone and there's no break between the cold zone and the tip of the nozzle. The heat break is integrated and a piece of the nozzle, which means you don't have to worry about torquing things, you don't have to worry about filament leakage, and you don't have to use both hands to do a nozzle change. I started 3D printing back in 2014 and I always worried about changing the nozzle because you had to grip the heater block with something and the nozzle with something else and typically you didn't have the right tools to use and you ended up crushing wires or scarring things or marring the nozzle and then eventually it would free and you would get it and then you'd have to put it back into place and you would hope things were okay and then you would have to re-level things and it would just be a friggin' nightmare. So this is awesome. And if this solution works in the K1 Max, then we've got ourselves an advanced 3D printer with really great capabilities that now, that now make it easier than ever to change a nozzle and takes away the worry of having stuff leak out. So here's my plan. What I'm gonna do is take out the Creality hot end and install the Flowtech hot end. And then once I do that, I'm gonna run the same filaments with the same G codes to get results. I'm gonna take those models and compare them with these models. This Flowtech hot end from Micro Swiss needs to print at least as well as what the Creality hot end was doing. And as I've shown you, it was doing a really good job. So. There might be an uphill battle here for Micro Swiss. They're good people though. Uh, I have all the confidence in the world. I've got faith in them. So I'm hoping that we're gonna see some really great prints once this hot end is in place. To install it, I think, I think we just do this. Yeah, look at that. Oh, it's beautiful. Baby's first extrusion. The results are in. I installed the Flowtech hot end into the K1 Max and then I did all the prints. I used the exact same G code and I used the exact same filaments as before to produce these models. And I'm having a really hard time telling these models apart. But I'm looking at these models and there's really not much difference at all. The lines are smooth, the layers are proper, it's, uh, the filament is evenly laid down, and in the case of the ABS, it performed just as great as the Creality hot end. I'm really, really happy with these results. So, we've accomplished part one, and that's to verify that the Flowtech hot end from Micro Swiss can perform at least as well as the default Creality hot end in the machine. Now though, we get to unlock the potential of this machine by easily installing larger nozzles. Oh, I'm so excited because just the ghosts of yesteryear of having to torque something down and having it loosen and crushing wires, it just, it still haunts me to this day. And I'm glad it's not there most of the time. And any time that we can make maintenance of a machine or upgrades of a machine uh, more user-friendly, for not necessarily the most technical of folk, we 
end up with better adoption for the technology. And so this machine from Creality, now with a Flowtech hot end and the ability to change the nozzle without having to heat it up and you don't have to use both hands, that's really, really going to appeal to a lot of people. If you don't have to heat up the hot end in order to change the nozzle, you've reduced risk and it's no longer as dangerous because you're not having to put your hands next to something that could boil water twice and a half times. And that's great for schools and maker spaces and public libraries and places where you need to have a certain safety bar for these machines before they can be used. And if you can make it easier in those places to maintain and upgrade those machines, you've done a good thing. Well, Micro Swiss, in all their glory, did send over some larger nozzles for this new Flowtech hot end for me to take advantage of. I've got a brass plated nozzle, a 0.6 millimeter one and a 0.8 millimeter one. And you know, where'd he go? If we're talking about plated brass, it means I can send things through it, such as carbon fiber PLA from Protopasta. Also in anticipation of doing this, I did load some Jesse Premium Pet G from Printed Solid. I figured I didn't, I got PLA, I got ABS, I, I should get some Pet G in there. So all of the prints from this point, testing out the two nozzle sizes here are either gonna be in carbon fiber PLA or Pet G. Let's print stuff. To start off, I went with the 0.4 millimeter nozzle, the one that was on there anyway. I was like, let's throw some PETG through it. Just something simple, something simple, something like a candy corn, something like a candy corn. Now this PETG is from Printed Solid. It is, it is Jesse Premium PETG Bold Blue, Bold Blue and Bold Indeed. And that is a candy corn with legs from, you guessed it, Zao 3D. So with the PETG still loaded, I unloaded it, and then I backed it out because I had to swap the nozzle. So I took the 0.4 out, I put the 0.6 in, and I printed myself a wee little bunny rabbit, a little one. Uh, it's, it's a little furry, just a little bit furry. Now there's two options here. One, I can use these just magnificently overbuilt flush cutters that Creality includes with the K1 Max, and they are amazing, but instead I've got another tip. What you should do rather than a heat gun is pick up a torch because you can take care of the filament wisps much easier and much cleaner. And just like that, they're gone. Anybody up for fried rabbit legs? No, thank you. With that 0.6 still on, I thought, why don't I print something a little bit useful? So I utilized the Protopasta Recycled Carbon Fiber PLA, and I printed myself a new case for my Flipper Zero. Flipper Zero is a neat little device, and this case will keep it nice and protected when I have it in my pocket or when I take it out exploring. That's a functional print. And what's on there right now is a surprise to me currently, but Joel in the future is going to be able to show you this amazing glow-in-the-dark unicorn. It's huge. It's a, it's a massive unicorn with this 0.8 millimeter nozzle. It's supposed to take 10 hours. Filamatrix never feel limited. They reached out and said, can we send you our glow-in-the-dark filament? And I was like, boy, howdy. Well, there we go, that's the K1 Max from Creality upgraded with the Micro Swiss Flowtech hot end. They sent it to me and they wanted my honest opinion on it. I think that I proved that this hot end can compete with the Creality hot end they include. Plus, it allows for things such as a cold nozzle change and you don't have to use both hands to do it. Plus, there is less of a chance, in fact, almost none, of filament leakage when you use this type of nozzle because the heat break is integrated. If you've got a K1 or a K1 Max and you're interested in this, I'll put a link down below. As far as the K1 Max goes, I think Creality really has a flagship machine on their hands. I'm excited to keep using this. Every once in a while, machines come in and they're neither here nor there. They're okay, but they, they don't inspire me. 
They don't inspire that that maker ethos and the the want to create. Whereas the experience I've had with the K1 Max has been incredibly positive and I can't wait to do more with it, especially now that it's got a 0.8 millimeter nozzle on it. Listen, if you made this fire awesome, don't forget to tell each other more, fight for a cause you believe in, upgrade all the things, and as always, high five.